next we are going to see the legal classification of cyber attacks based on legal aspects cyber attacks can also be classified as follows number 1 cyber crime number 2 cyber espionage number 3 cyber terrorism and number 4 cyber war these are all very serious according to the legal aspects cyber crime as discussed earlier cyber crime is defined by the canadian law as a criminal offense involving a computer as the object of the crime or the tool used to commit a material component of the offense here the objective of this is to use the system as a tool to commit the crime and the computer as an auxiliary of the crime these cyber crimes occur due to the vulnerability of the operating system lack of user awareness anonymous nature and storage capacity of the computer next is cyber espionage the act of using a malware or a malicious software like trojan horse and spyware to obtain secret data of groups of or of individuals and the government to gain benefits through illegal means without obtaining the authorization from the holder it is alternatively known as cyber spying and it may be completely carried out from computers in locations that are based in a far away place it's possibly uh, it possibly involves invasion at home by spies trained in computer usage or may be perpetuated by malicious or an amateur hacker or and software programmer sometimes next is cyber terrorism it is the activity carried out by the terrorist on the internet to disrupt large number of system networks with computer viruses and other resources cyber war it is the act of attacking another nation's computer or network or critical infrastructures to cause disruption or disturbance in the normal life or routine this is known as cyber war next we'll see based on the severity of involvement based on the involvement and the severity they are further classified into two namely the active attacks and passive attacks active attacks these types of attacks enable the attacker to communicate data to all the divisions during data transmission either in the unidirectional or multidirectional form the attacker located between the intercommunicating parties tries to terminate the data sent by the parties in the network as the server cannot authenticate the data source without validating the received information the attacker tries to replace the client during this entire authentication process we'll see more on authentication in the subsequent sections next comes the passive attacks using wire tapping or other similar methods an unauthorized attacker spies to steal the system information during the communication process that takes place between two parties this is different from an active attack as it does not interfere with any of the activities with databases or servers but still may be considered as a criminal offense next we'll see based on scope how the cyber attacks are classified they are classified into two namely the malicious large scale and non malicious small scale malicious large scale the meaning of malicious is to have a deliberate intent to cause harm these types of attacks are conducted by a single individual or group to obtain a private benefit or to trigger chaos and confusion these are wide ranging attacks affecting countless systems and causing system crash all over the world with massive data loss thereby affecting the integrity
Next is non-malicious small scale. These are generally the attacks that takes place accidentally or with improper handling or due to the carelessness of an individual resulting in the damage of negligible data loss or system crashes. In such circumstances, only few systems in the network are compromised where the data is typically recovered associated uh, with minor cost. Next or maybe the last one, the cyber attacks are classified based on the network types. Cyber attacks can also be classified according to the network types as mobile ad hoc networks and wireless sensor networks. Basically, they are wireless network types. The manet attacks, that is the mobile ad hoc network attacks are Byzantine attack, black hole attack, flood rushing attack, Byzantine wormhole attack and Byzantine overlay network wormhole attack. As I told you in previously, these are all the attacks on wireless networks. First of all, Byzantine attack. This attack exclusively targets the mobile ad hoc networks. It takes place by compromising the device authentication through a data leakage. As a result, the authenticated device becomes undistinguishable from a hostile user. Next is a black hole attack. This type of attack occurs due to malicious nodes attracting data packets by falsely advertising a fresh route to the destination. As a result, there occurs a disappearance of transferred information which is referred to as black hole attacks. The nodes are only called as black holes. The two primary forms of messages they use for attacking are RREQ that is root request and RREP that is root reply. Next comes the flood rushing attack. During the propagation of floods, there occurs a race between the legitimate flood and the adversary flood, which is nothing but based on the traffic. This results in failed establishment of adversarial free route even with strong authentication methods. Next is the Byzantine wormhole attacks. This attack actually takes place by compromising multiple nodes in the network. When adversaries tunnel network packets between them, this attack takes place by creating shortcuts within the networks. This attack is very strong in nature that involves a compromising at least two nodes. Next is the Byzantine overlay network wormhole attack. This is the strongest and the most efficient of all other attacks discussed above and it is also known as a super wormhole attack. This attack helps in individuals by creating enormous traffic in the routing protocols that ultimately results in network disruption. Finally, we are going to discuss about the attacks on wireless sensor networks in short WSM. Based on various layers and techniques used in the attack domain, attacks again found in WSN can be further classified into two, namely cryptography and non-cryptography related attacks and attacks based on the network layers. First, cryptography and non-cryptography related attacks. Some of the attacks that come under this category, they use pseudo-random numbers attack and sometimes the digital signature attack and hash collision attack. Attacks on the layers. In the application layer, the attacks are repudiation and data corruption. Under the transport layer, the attacks are session hijacking and sync flooding. Under network layer, wormhole, black hole, Byzantine, flooding, resource conception, and location disclosure attacks. These are the normal attacks under the network layer. 
in data link layer traffic analysis monitoring and disruption of mac these are some of the attacks on the data link layer finally on the physical layer the attacks like jamming interception and eavesdropping are possible also multi layer attacks are also a possibility something like denial of service attacks impersonation attacks and man in the middle attacks they are these types of attacks which can even operate at all layer levels this section briefly discussed the history of cyber attacks definition characteristics of cyber attacks the purpose and motivation and finally a simple classification of cyber attacks we'll see in the next module which with much more details thank you